What's good? It's the boy Zeke Pablo, 7 0 Trey all day, represented. I just jumped off the porch for Dirty Glove Bastard. Let's get it. All right, today we got my dog Zeke Pablo jumping off the porch with us today. What's good with it, my nigga? You already know what time it is. Zeke Pablo, 7 0 Trey all day, represented. 2 and 5, Mr. Magma, what's poppin'? What's going on with you, gang? Chillin', man. You know, had to come out to the A, had to touch the South, you mean? Had to see the fam, had to make some moves. That's you the know real what it is. One. Yeah. For sure. It's a pleasure to have you here on the porch with us today, my dog. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. So, For tell sure. me, what you out here working on in Atlanta? Shit, man. You know, I had to touch the South, like I said, you know. Came out here to Atlanta, you know, see my peoples. I mean, I got peoples all over the South. I've been on the West Coast and shit, you know. Grinding, doing my thing, you know. That's the real one. Yeah. So for those who wouldn't know, how would you describe life at first in Virginia? Virginia? I mean, shit. Virginia is a whole another whole another ball game, you know what I'm saying? Like, ain't really much going on in Virginia, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to give y'all the whole rundown with me, you know what I'm saying? Because I got a pretty unique situation. Um, I was born in Virginia. I was born in a city called Manassas, like right outside of D.C. That's like northern Virginia. 703 area um you know my parents they wasn't really the best fit so uh you know my mom she was a crack fiend she was on the crack real heavy um she's still in rehab today you know what i mean god bless her um but my pops you know he, he you know he was a little more a little more stable parent when i was a young boy so um my mom was from new york my dad was from philly i went to philly with my pops so i left virginia when i was like 9 10 i mean so i wasn't really raised in the dmv like that that's why I rep both, VA and Philly. So I moved to Philly with my dad, um, and I was out there in Philadelphia, you know, grinding, doing my thing. I wasn't really, like, you know, jumping off the porch per se. Like, I was more so, like, in the sports. Like, I was running track, uh, play football, you know, I used to draw and stuff like that. But, you know, when you living in the streets, eventually you're going you know, you to get entangled. That's just how it go, you know what I'm saying? Like, I remember when I first went out there, like, uh, the first month, it was like a culture shock. It kind of fucked me up because, like, it was a whole shootout in front of my whole, like, right in front of my crib. It was a shootout. Like, like uh, these drug dealers, I mean, on the corner, they got into it with the police, shooting up the block. I mean, they shot right in front of my house, though. And I'm a young boy. I'm a young kid looking at it. I'm like, Daddy, they shooting. You know what I mean? Like, it's a movie, you know what I'm saying? And my dad was like, nigga, get out on the ground right now. Get out. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's how we used to talk. You know what I mean? He's like, nigga, get out. And they shooting up. And, um, man, it was bullet holes all in the house and shit. So it was a culture shock. I mean, coming from, like, northern Virginia, which is, like, country kind of, you know, kind of safer, you know what I mean, middle class to, to, to inner city, uptown Philadelphia, the trenches, you know what I mean? So it was, a, it was nutty, but, you know, that, that's probably what's, that's, that's, that's what got me into the music situation because my daddy ended up dying. Uh, he passed away November 30th. Uh, 20, 2010, R.P. Don, I love you. He died, that put me in a great depression, you know what I'm saying? So at first I started smoking a lot of weed. I was heavy in the drugs, I was doing the weed. And then eventually I started doing the music. You know what I mean, the music was kind of like the therapy, should I say, you know what I mean? So um, I remember going to college because he always wanted me to go to college. So I went to Norfolk State University in the 757, Virginia. And um, I was just like really in a deep, deep depression, man. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, I, I, I got caught, like some old heads from the city. They took me under the wing. You know, shout out Inferno. You know I mean, Inferno Viz, Kev Inferno. Shout out Mall Gates, Heat Factory, West Philly. They, they showed me love. You know what I mean? They took me under the wing. You know, I'm going all through the city. I mean, I'm doing interviews, North Philly, South Philly, Southwest, West. I'm doing ciphers. You know what I mean? I'm getting my, my name up, my buzz up. I used to go by uh, Zeke P, you know what I mean, Zeke P. I, I didn't tell him what the P was for. Uh, and then next thing you know, I ended up signing a deal. I signed an independent deal in Philly. Um, we, I did a song called Grinch. That was like my first like little video, whatever. And it, it was doing all right, you know what I mean? I got, uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, Gilly the Kid jumped on it. Yeah, Gilly the Kid hopped on it, you know, he showed love. But I wasn't really able to push it, you know what I mean, do the video with him and all that. Because I'm in college, I'm in Virginia, you know what I'm saying? So. I'm going back and forth, Philly to VA. And um, so I'm in Virginia. Next thing you know, you know, I ended up getting into a situation with the police out there because, you know, I'm broke. I'm broke as fuck. I'm a young, broke nigga in college. Like, 
I ain't got no money, I ain't got no car, I ain't got no bitches, I ain't got shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like my family did me dirty as fuck. Like, like when you know somebody die, you know, life insurance get involved, and whenever there's a lot of money involved, you really see the heart of a man, you really see who you're dealing with, you know what I mean? So, you know, family, you know, let's just say I got the shit into the stick, you know what I mean? And um, so, you know, I'm trapping it. I'm, I'm on my Tariq St. Patrick shit, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm pushing weed in college, you know, in the dorms or whatever. And uh, I wasn't pushing the hard shit because, you know, that, that would have been too risky. Um, during the holidays, I go back up north from the 757 back to the 703, uh, you know, Woodbridge, Manassas area. I'm, I'm pushing crack, selling crack. So I'm just doing what I got to do because, I'm, you know what I mean, I got to get it. I ain't finna be no broke nigga out here. So um, long story short, you know, I, I get like three racks saved up, but I get into a situation with this cop. So like I'm walking into the corner store down in Norfolk and I get profiled. I don't know if they was watching me or what, but you know, I dap some niggas up at the corner store, woo, woo, woo. This uh, cop, he pull up to me, he like, hey you, come here with the dreads. I, you know, I had short dreads back then. And I ignore him, you know what I mean? And uh, he like, he like, hey you boy, turn around boy. You know, like extra racist out there. I turn around, I said, man, fuck you pig. I, I, I snap on him, I like, cuss the cop out, like, fuck out of here. I ain't do shit. What you what you coming to me for? Next thing you know, this nigga grabbed me, he slammed me on the on the wall, you know what I mean? So I elbow, I elbow him in the face, you know what I mean? Next thing you know, I'm getting my ass beat by the police. They put me in cuffs, take me, put me in a cop car, take me to the Norfolk City jail. And um, I was just, you know, I was just fuming, yo. I remember they put me before the magistrate, and she was like, uh, right before they processed me, they was like, uh, officer, what did this man do? He couldn't even answer the question. So they ended up letting me go. They, they literally like took me back to where the cop arrested me and just let me out on the street, took the cuffs off me. So I remember that day, um, I was like walking back to my dorms, to my dormitory, NSU. And I was like, yo, I was calling on niggas. I was calling on family. Nobody was there to help the boil out. Nobody, nobody had my back. So I'm like, shit, I'm in this shit dolo. I'm in this shit alone. I mean, I, like, I accepted the hand I got dealt. I accepted the facts. So. Um, I took the three stacks that I told you about. I took the three and I went out to Cali. I went out to the West Coast. So now I'm in California. I'm doing my thing out Cali. Man, I blow through that three stacks so goddamn fast, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> but I'm a young nigga. You know, I'm a young nigga from yeah. the East Coast in LA, bro. Like, what the fuck you think I'm gonna do? Like, I'm in Venice Beach. I'm in Santa Monica. I'm in Hollywood. I'm, I blew through that money, bro. Next thing you know, I'm broke in a week. Like, I'm like, crap, I'm broke. I got no money. So um, I ended up on uh, Skid Row. I ended up on Skid Row. Like that's like a downtown, that's a downtown LA. That's like a homeless community, you know what I mean? It's like a shelter. And um, I was in the shelter and I just remember like, these motherfuckers, they was treating me like shit, bro. Like they was talking to me like I was like less than nothing, bro. Like less than trash, like less than a dog. Like, you know what I mean? Like you nothing. And I'm like, word. I'm like, I ain't never gonna put myself in a position like this ever again in life, you feel me? So I left the shelter after the first night and I literally slept on the streets. I slept on the streets. Like I said, man, fuck this. I was literally sleeping on the concrete, bro. And then like two days passed by, I'm like, yo, fuck this shit. So I go to Long Beach. I go out there to Long Beach. I hit some licks. I get myself up out of that fucked up predicament. I get myself up out of the situation. So, um, you know, now I'm, you know, I'm living, but I ain't really doing the music like that. Cause it's like, music costs money, bro. This shit, this shit costs, you feel me? So studio time, video. So I'm, I'm just living. Um, I end up getting hit by a car, like going, going to a job. I end up getting hit by a car. So like life just giving it to me, bro. I'm not, now I'm fucked up. I just got hit by a car. I can't work, I can't move around. So I go back to the East Coast and the whole time I had a warrant in DC. So I go back to the East Coast of Virginia with my moms, but I got a warrant in DC. So they extradite me to DC. Now I'm sitting in jail. Now I'm in jail for like six months. So life just giving it to me, bro. Um, they gave me like a John Gotti bond. I, I couldn't get out. My bond was like 60,000. That's like six racks. You gotta pay 10%. I ain't had that. So once they lowered it, I got out. And then my homie from Cali, he was like, yo, my nigga, yo, Zeke, nigga. Like, what you doing, bro? Like, nigga, come on, come on back to the West Coast. So he helped me, you know, he helped me with the bond. He helped me get back to Cali. So I go back to Cali. And this time, this is when like, you know, a switch goes off in my head with this music shit. Cause I run into Suge Knight. Like, I meet Suge, you know what I mean? Death Row, you know what I mean? I meet him in the valley. 
And um, it's funny because I'm with I'm with the homie or whatever. You know, he crip. I'm with I'm with the crip homie, and we we in the valley. We see Shug. He's like, well, that's Shug. And he like, man, fuck that nigga Shug, cut. Like he like, fuck Shug, cut. You know what I mean? Like he ain't rocking with that nigga. You feel yeah. me? He like, fuck Shug, cut. I'm like, nigga. I'm like, nigga, hold on, nigga. It's hip hop history right here, my nigga. Niggas talk down on Suge Knight all day, man. Fuck all that, nigga. This nigga signed Tupac, nigga. You hear me? He got Pac out of jail, you hear me? Like, that's, that's history, bro. That's hip hop history. So I'm like, I ain't gonna not say nothing to the nigga. So I approached him, you hear me? I approached Suge, you know? And he was so respectful, bro. He was ultimate, respectful, cool, cool as shit, bro. Like, he, like, the opposite of mad niggas out here. Niggas out here be arrogant, arrogant dickheads. You feel me? He was cool. And we chopped it up. We had a whole conversation. And he basically was telling me, like, yo, I told him I rap, woo woo, I'm Zeke, I rap, woo woo. And he was like, uh, that's what's up, you rap. He like, yo, hold your masters, my nigga. That's what he told me. Shug Knight told me, he said, hold your masters and boss up. Start your own label, you feel me? After that conversation with Shug Knight, I went back to the East Coast. I started, you know, started getting money. I started doing my thing, grinding. I dropped a record called It Is What It Is, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, in parentheses, it is what it is. I basically pay homage to Atlanta. Cause you know what I mean? I was fucking with my Atlanta niggas, you feel me? My Atlanta homie was supposed to do it. He never executed the record. So I said, fuck it, I'm gonna do it. And um, so I did It Is What It Is. But it, it, was, it was moving, it was starting to buzz. But you know, like every record that's starting to bubble, like you gotta, you gotta take it to the next level. So I needed a feature. I needed somebody to jump on it. So it was three, it was three options. I was working with like 10, I had like 10 on me. You had, I had Fetty Wap. Uh, Slim Jesus and Ball Out from GBE. Ball Out went in like five. I mean, uh, Fetty Wap went in like 20, 25 for a verse. I'm like, shit, I ain't even got that. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't even got 25. So I'm talking with the nigga trying to talk him down. He like, shit, he do a hook for 10. That's all I got. You feel me? I'm like, nigga, I'm fucking with the bitches. I'm traveling. I'm moving around. I ain't trying to spend my whole 10. You feel me? That's all I got. So he like, shit, goddamn, I mean, shit, he, he'll, fuck, he'll fuck with you for like the eight. He'll do, the, he'll do, he'll, he'll do like the uh, ad-libs, like, and, then, and mind you, this is Fetty Wap, Trap Queen Fetty Wap. You feel me? Like, shout out Fetty through a situation he going through right now. This is Trap Queen Fetty, so he on fire right now. He like, yo, he'll do like the ad-libs. He'll do like the, like the, yeah, baby, you know what I mean? He'll do the ad-libs through the, through the is what it is hook. I'm like, bet. But I ain't want to pay that shit either, bro. <laughs> that shit was like, he went in like 8K. I'm like, nah. So the Slim nigga, Slim Jesus, this nigga, he fucked with the record. He fucked what it is, what it is. He's like, y'all want to just jump on it. I'm a, you know what I mean? I'm an obscure nigga. I ain't known. I'm like, fuck it. Jump on it. Whatever. So he jumped on it. The verse was fire. I fucked with the verse. And uh, so we went to do the video. Me and my niggas in Atlanta, we went up to Cincinnati to do the video. He wanted like 300 bucks to do the video. I'm like, bet. I'm still, I'm still having, but like, that's why you gotta be careful with features, yo. You gotta be careful with features because the nigga ain't wanna promote it. I don't know what it was, I don't know, like he was on some funny time, whatever, you know what I mean? And this is before the whole Vlad bullshit. I don't care about none of that shit. Like, I'm confident in me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I know where I'm from, I know where I come from. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. So we did the video, but he ain't wanna promote it, so I'm, I'm like, yo, this shit kinda weak. The, the cameraman, shout out to Cannon. That's the cameraman, Cannon Jones. Shout out to him. He did some nut shit though. I'm gonna keep it 100. He did some nut shit, bro. He ain't put my name in the title of, yeah. of the video. Like he put like, he put like, he put like Virginia rapper with Slim Jesus. I'm like, nigga, what? I'm like, nigga, put my name on that John. Nigga, put my name on that shit. He, he ain't do it. So I said, bet. So I took it down. And it was moving. That shit was about to blow up. That shit was like 50K. It did like 50K in like five days. It was moving. But I ain't give a fuck. I'm like, but you know what? It worked out perfectly because at the end of the day, it's like, I ain't known for just that one record. I got other records in the tuck. You know what I mean? Like I got, I got Pablo, I got Doe, I got Glizzo, I got Just Got Stacks. I got a whole bunch of other shit that, you know what I mean? Like, so it worked out perfectly anyway. So I ain't, you know what I mean? Fuck that shit. You know what I'm saying? But whole time it's like, at the end of the day, I just kept moving, kept grinding, kept doing my thing. 
and uh, we got Pablo, Pablo moving right now. I got another record called Pabla. That's like a follow up to Pablo, so, you know what I'm saying? So where did the inspiration for Pablo come from? Pablo, yeah, so I'm glad you asked that question, bro. Pa Pablo, like, all right, that's my name, Zeke Pablo, you know what I mean? Zeke Pablo, like it's Zeke P, and I, I basically, Zeke Pablo, that's what the P for, Pablo. Because I always was a hustler. I always got money. That's all I ever, ever did. Like my pop, my dad, he, that's all he taught me. Hustle, nigga. Grind. Whatever you doing, get it. You know what I'm saying? And Pablo Picasso. I told you I used to draw. That's what, these niggas don't know this. So, Z Pablo. So, I been did that record. I just never did the video for it. So, I did the video for it. I was out El Paso, Texas, like right next to Mexico. Yeah. So, I'm like, because I was fucking with a little shorty out there or whatever. This is when COVID hit. So, I'm like, I'm going to go to El Paso because... These niggas out here in Dallas and Houston, they act like they don't got no sense. They ain't wearing a mask. I'm gonna go to a city where it ain't that many people, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Like, so I go to El Paso and uh, yeah, I do the video of Pablo. You know what I mean, just to show love, like show, like bring, I feel like it's a it's a gap between like 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 black people and, and Latina, Latino people, you feel me? Like it's like a, it's like a, you know I mean? I just wanted to bridge that divide because me coming from the East Coast, being from the East Coast, and then going to the West Coast, it's a total dynamic. It's different. It's different. Like, like the East Coast, we, we cool with the Latino, you know what I mean? Like blacks, Puerto Rican, Dominican, you know I mean, we all, we like one big family. You feel me? Whereas like, like, like Cali, like the West Coast is different. Like, like it's predominantly Mexican. You, you, like if you black and you walking through like a Mexican hood, like East LA, you might get your head knocked off. E easy, like, or jumped or stabbed, you feel me? Like, it's, it's, they don't fuck with, it's a divide. Like, blacks don't fuck with me Mexicans, and Mexicans don't fuck with blacks on the West Coast. So I just, I just did that shit just to, like, you know, like, it's all love. I mean, we all minorities in America, you know what I mean? Like, we got to stick together. Fuck that bullshit. No, that's real. Yeah. So what's your current thoughts on the rap game right now? Man, for real, yo, I feel like the rap game fucked up. I ain't even gonna cap with you. Like, I, I feel like, I feel like the, the music industry right now, yo, it's like a big ass plantation. Like, like you got all these recent killings, RP Young Dolph, RP, you know, all these niggas. It's like the rappers is like the new gangsters, and motherfucking the, the the niggas is like the new KKK. We just killing each other, bro. And I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't know why. I don't know why this is. Why this is. But what it is, is it's a big ass plantation. You got the house nigga. You got the field nigga. The house nigga, that's the bull with the money, the chain, the fame. He, he probably pushing the beamer, you know what I mean? Got all the bitches. That's the house nigga, right? The field nigga is a nigga that ain't got no money. He, he broke. He fucked up. He looking at this like, fuck this motherfucker. You know what I mean? He, you know what I mean? He hating. By default. By default. The house nigga and the field nigga are gonna hate, hate each other. They gonna hate one another because it's a divide. You understand what I'm saying? They, they don't like each other. As a matter of fact, they hate each other more than they hate the slave master or the, or the, or the man in the big house. That's what the music game is right now. Bro. It's the same shit. You got house niggas and field niggas. My whole thing is, yo, f fuck being a house nigga or a field nigga. Be your own man. Like, like run away from the plantation. Be independent. You sign a deal. I mean, you can sign a deal, distro, and they work with you as a partner. That's cool. But you sign a deal, they going to throw you that big money, and that's it. You ain't getting no more money. It's a wrap. Hang it up. You going to get some fame, but I don't really care too much about fame. It's like, like fame, that's, that's like a weakness in itself also, but that's another conversation. It's like you sign to a deal. They own your shit. They own you. They own your masters. They own your shit. They, they control when you put your music out. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing. I feel like niggas got to just be independent. And I also feel like it's got to be a balance. Like right now, like if, you look, if you look at hip hop today, right? 2021, we in 2021, about to be 2022. When was hip hop started? Hip hop was started when? Like late 70s. 80s, yeah. Bronx, New York, right? They was talking about coming from the struggle, right? The struggle. It went from that to the 90s with Tupac, Crips, Bloods, gang banging on the West Coast, right? Then it went from, that's gangster rap. Then it went to here, to Atlanta, to the South. It, went, it came to the South. 
And the South still got it on lock, but it came to the South trapping. Everybody trap, trap, trap or die, selling drugs, pushing that white, pushing that snow, snowman, right? Then 2010, it went to Chicago. It went to Chicago with the drill, the drill rap, right? Then here we are in the 2020s. I don't even know what to call this shit now, bro. It's like motherfucking, it's like demon rap. It's like, it's like, it's, it's demon rap. It's like everything's kill, 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 murder, 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 kill a nigga, kill a nigga, murder, murder, bow, bow. It's like, goddamn, it's like, we, we can't talk about nothing else, my nigga. Like, like, come on, man. Like, you mean, I come from, I can, I can speak on this because I come from it. I live both sides of it. I live both sides of it. It's like, bro, the hood ain't cool, bro. You feel me? Like, it's where we come from, but it's like you got these niggas glorifying this shit, sensationalizing it. And, and niggas was getting that academics and shit back in the day with the, with the war in Chirac. But you got a bunch of niggas now doing the same shit. And they ain't even getting called out. So I don't know what that's about, but it's like at the end of the day, they, 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 they making stories on cities, right? You got Jacksonville, Florida. You got Memphis. You got, you got Chicago still. You got Philadelphia. Philadelphia on one right now. You got cities that's going crazy. Mur niggas murdering one another. We at war with one another. And they making stories about it. It's like, come on, man. It's, it's sad. This shit is damn near sad. And my thing is, at the end of the day, we hip hop, we gotta switch, we gotta turn it around. Like, like it's, it's, you can have balance, you feel me? You come from the hood, we gonna, we gonna talk about it because we come from it, you mean? But you could also talk about the other side of it. You feel what I'm saying? Like, like you could talk about how your, how your cousin just got his, his brains blown out or your uncle just got 20 in the feds. That's not cool, that's, that's not cool at all. That's not good news, you feel me? So my thing is like, Let's give balance. Let's, let's talk about other things, bro. You could talk about a girl that just broke your heart, right? You could talk about your mom on drugs. You could talk about whatever. It's just, you know what I mean? We, we got to switch the dynamic because at the end of the day, when you, when you in the hood, when you coming from the hood, niggas want to be one of three things in America. And this is the facts. We, we, know race, we know America is a racist country. We know blacks are at the bottom socioeconomically. We, we broke. We ain't got no money. We fucked up in the game. We know this. And we was put there by design and we kept there by design. It's the reason why we, we kept there by design. This is America. America is a capitalist country. So it's like, you, in, a, in a capitalist country, you gotta have a permanent underclass. You gotta have a permanent, you know, class of people who broke as fuck, who willing to work. Unfortunately, that's us. But we, we, we got more power than we think we do at the end of the day. But niggas wanna be rappers, niggas wanna be ball players. And niggas want to be gangsters. Niggas want to be rappers, ball players, and gangsters. My nigga, you a gangster? You you going to two places, bro? It's two places you going to. We all know that. We know that. You a ball player? You gonna get some money as a ball player? But you know you gotta you gotta take that shit serious. I mean you got you know super tall. You gotta you gotta be in the gym. You gotta work that shit. And even still, it's not long money. You gotta do other things. Rappers, rappers get money. We get money, but you know it ain't it ain't like it ain't like NBA players. You know what I mean, you, you might own your masters. You gonna eat for life. You got a fan base. You good. These niggas ain't. No, these niggas don't own their masters. These niggas are signing, and they they done. They they get that big check, and it's a wrap. That's it. I get a check every motherfucking week. You feel me? Like, and I'm not the most famous. I don't want to be famous, but I get a check every week, and it's not just music. It's other things. Right? You gotta keep six streams. You can get money from Airbnb. You can rent out spots. You get money from Toro. You can rent out cars. Uh, you can sell cars. You can play with crypto. You can play with stocks. You can Uber, whatever. It's so much shit you could do. But what I'm saying is you wanna own your masters. It's all about ownership. Own your masters. Own your home. Own this. Own, you gotta own shit. Niggas wanna be rappers, you know what I mean? Rap, this is my thing with rap. Our main thing with music, with rappers, is we got the influence. Like, we, we make this America shit cool around the world. Like, think about it, bro. You feel me? Like, we make this shit, we got the influence. So whatever we talking about in our songs, that's what, you mean? That's what niggas want, want, want to do, you mean? So it's like, I just feel like, I feel like it need to be more balanced in the game. You know, I'm an artist myself, but I'm, I'm, more on, I'm more on that CEO type shit. I'm the type boy, I'll sign you. 
and we're going to put out some dope ass music. But when you a CEO, it's easier when you rap too, because you can do songs with your artists and y'all blow up simultaneously. You understand what I'm saying? Because like, it's all in-house. It's all in-house. You feel me? So shout out all my artists, you man. TMG No Kari. I mean, TMG Ness. Noob, what up? Straight up. Any last words and shout outs? Ownership, bro. Ownership. Any last words? Um, shit, bro. I want to say, uh, be on the lookout for my book. I got a book coming out. I'm writing a book right now. I can't, I can't disclose that title. Check out my new song, Letter to Don 2. I mean, I'm talking about my pops. R.I.P. Don, you feel me? He the reason I do this shit. This music shit, political, it's tricky. So you gotta have a, you gotta have a passion to do this shit for real. Um, this shit, shout, shout out, shout out, shout out VA, shout out Virginia, the whole Virginia, shout out Philadelphia, Uptown, what's cracking? You already know what time it is, 21st and Shelton, uh, Newport News, Manassas, Woodbridge, uh, Richmond, shout out, shout out the whole VA. VA kind of divided right now, but shout out the whole VA. Straight up, Zeke, Pablo, we appreciate having you today, gang. Glad to be here, my nigga. You already know what time it is. Mr. Magma, Mr. Magma 3, coming soon. Bow.